Hello everyone and welcome to Crusader Kings 3 and my first video on this brand new game. I'm very excited to get this started and I do apologize, I know I am about a week late. The game has been out for quite some time and um, interestingly I actually had the opportunity to get my hands on the game a little bit early. Um, I was sent a preview code by Paradox but unfortunately I couldn't really make all too much use of it because uh, I'm, I've am i been very busy in the last couple of months. I'm actually quite busy right now and I, cont well, I will be busy uh, or even busier in the near future. So um, either way I have finally found the time to get this series started. I'm very excited and um, yeah I guess we're just going to go and jump right in. Now before we do that actually though I do want to quickly mention that I love this paper um, this paper map, these paper map graphics. I mean, all these like uh, little signs that you have in the oceans. This is very cool. I, I really, really enjoy that. And in general, you know, one of the things I obviously love is that you can just, you know, turn it around all the way. This is something I've been wanting uh, to do in EU4 and other games as well. So it's cool to see that here in CK3. Plus, some of the other cool things that I like is that we already have the game rules um, that we are uh, or that I really enjoyed um, in CK2. In fact, there's actually a couple things I do want to change in the x slave independence. I want it to make it limited, but I want it so that um, AI or that not just AI, but players or like me personally will be affected as well. Now, most of the things I'm going to leave on default because I really just don't know how it affects the game. So I might as well just leave it there. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, again, I don't want to have any benefits as a player. I think that's not really necessary. Does this mean AI? Yeah, I think it should be. Okay. Uh, well, it, it doesn't just include AI. It includes me as well. That's That was my question. Um, now, I'm very interested, by the way, why we have these options, like sexuality distribution and all that stuff. Like, that seems very interesting, and obviously, I'm very interested in this. Character nudity with the new graphics, that can become very interesting. Uh, I'm somewhat upset, though, that there's only two options, default and never. There should definitely be an always option, in my mind, anyways. I guess there's going to be mods for that. Oh my god, there, there probably will be. That was actually just a joke, but I, I think there are actually going to be mods about that. Anyway, uh, okay, let's close that here, and let's, as I said, get into the game. Now, I've chosen the uh, earliest start date. There's only two start dates this time, but I think that's plenty. Um, and, well, the reason, actually, the reason I will explain very soon, uh, as uh, when I when I tell you about why I play what I play. Now, in, f in, in fact... Uh, we're going to be playing as Nicosia, or Nicosia here, Count Sto Storakios of Nicosia. Um, I'll talk more about this once we're in the game, but I do want to mention that I actually had a different plan. In fact, I already started a different series over here in Lithuania. And uh, after some initial success, that series went badly very quickly because... It basically was just a, co it was just constant warfare, but not like in a fun way. It was, I was being declared war upon all the time. I couldn't do anything. And that didn't really make for a good series specifically because I got frustrated very quickly. And so I hope that here, um, we're going to have a better time. Now I know the Byzantines, the Abbasids, they're at war um, most of the time, or there will be plenty of times. And we're like, right at the border but this is actually something very cool that i only found out right now and i want to share with you cyprus has a very interesting history um because you know under well basically cyprus has been a part of the roman empire for a long time and when the roman empire split into two it stayed with the eastern part naturally as it is uh, located in the east geographically. Now, um, it was part of the Byzantine Empire until uh, 650 AD when the Arabs first arrived and conquered part of the area and left a garrison there. Now, in 688 AD, Emperor Justinian II, as well as the Abbasid Caliph, came to a historical agreement where they decided that Cyprus would become a condominium. So basically, it would be an island that both rulers or both realms would share. And that is very interesting because basically what that means is the taxes of 
the island was shared between both nations, even while both nations were pretty much constantly at war. And so this is a very interesting, uh, yeah, just a very interesting concept. And interestingly, under uh, Basileo's Mas uh, Basil the Macedonian, as his name is, but I think here in the game, he's actually just called Basileos of Macedon. This guy, under this guy, Cyprus was actually briefly reconquered in its entirety for the Byzantine Empire. Um, sp yeah, pretty much specifically from 866 um, until the end of his reign. And so we're right at the moment where, uh, you know, potentially Cyprus could become whole again, or it could become part of the Byzantine Empire once more. Um, and yeah, this is a very exciting period. And also, I just really like um, that just the current situation the Byzantine Empire is in. Right now, our emperor is actually at war against Sultan Muhammad of the Aglabids over here, defending what is left of the Sicilian holdings. And as you can see, Crete over here is held by the Hafsids, which is a Muslim um, clan. And um, yeah, potentially, in my mind, we might be able to form, I mean, first of all, we need to get uh, Cyprus back, then I want to go and take over Crete, and potentially we can reconquer Sicily for the Byzantine Empire. That's, that's my goal, sort of. I don't really have much of a great plan here, because for the most part, I just want to have fun, I want to check out the game, but that could be a pot potential, you know, avenue for expansion. And um, as an island, we will hopefully be somewhat safe from raids. I have no, no reason to really, ex you know, to really expect that. I just hope it's not going to be as bad as it was here in Lithuania, because that was terrible. Um, it, it, it was not just the raids, it was the constant warfare as well. So I hope we have a little bit of relief here. We'll have to see. Um, but yeah, let's now actually check out our current ruler. We have playing as Count... Storakios of Nicosia. He's 35 years old and he's of the house Orphanotrophos. Now, how um, I actually googled that house and it doesn't seem to actually exist. This house, um, well, at least the name Orphan Orphanotrophos, this is like a title. Like, I, I think that is the dude that is in charge of the orphanages. And there was actually a relatively... Uh, well, prestigious title in Constantinople at the time. So I'm not sure where that name comes from exactly, but as you can see, our family is currently obscure. Like basically nobody knows, like we're less than insignificant. That says very much about our family. And we only have four members. So basically, let's quickly check this out here. Um, we have 52 renown, is that it? Yeah, four members. So it's basically us and then our daughter and our two daughters and our son. And uh, yeah, that's it. This house was actually founded by us some 30 years ago. Um, so basically, we were just put in charge of, uh, I guess, the taxes in Cyprus. And we're going to have to send them back to the emperor. Uh, but yeah, obviously, we're going to try and make this one great. The whole dynasty thing has obviously been revamped here in uh, CK3. And uh, it's, yeah, it's going to be, it's quite di different once we get the legacies and all that stuff. But we'll check that out later. For now, that doesn't really matter too much. Uh, we can actually also rename our dynasty, which I might do if some of you have a better name. Because this is not, like, you know, this is a this is a random name. We can definitely come up with something better than that. Um, but I also love that uh, we now have a motto here. Triumph through the spear. Which I believe we can change as well. Yeah, we can. So we might do that. We might not do that right now since we're the founder of the house. But I could see us... Um, changing these things as we, uh, you know, as perhaps uh, as our son, uh, that could happen. But yeah, anyways, um, we are obviously uh, Orthodox and Greek. Not really a surprise right there. And um, we are very, very weak when it comes to military strength. Um, let's actually quickly check out our um, domain here. Now, obviously, one of the big changes in CK3 is also that you can now see the baronies or the subholdings on the map. So this is our main holding, the barony of Nicosia. But there's also the city of Limassol, which is held by uh, the mayor, Mayor Samuel, over here, who is, I believe, our only vassal. He has nine gold. Well, very good. Very good. He's a compassionate craven, and he's zealous. Interesting. This could potentially 
become a problem. But yeah, let's quickly check out our ruler here. We are brave, we are vengeful, and we are content. We are also a misguided warrior, so we had a martial education, but not a very good one. And we are a cautious leader. We are careful not to take any, any unnecessary risk in battles, but we do so at the cost of potential gain. Interesting. So, yeah, I feel like we're more like a, a cautious person. You know, we're not very risk... Yeah, I mean, a cautious leader. We're content, but we're also brave. If we know that we have a chance, I think we'll take our chances. Um, and also... Well, we are slow to forget a slight. So, um, yeah, I think we're pretty much unhappy about this whole Cyprus situation. And we're going to try and make ourselves become the, well, I guess, Duke. I guess it's called Theme um, in the Greek world here. But yeah, I guess we want to be the ruler of a combined Cyprus. A united Cyprus. That's going to be my first goal here. Um, yeah. Other than that, um, we can quickly check out our culture here. It works very differently, like the whole technology thing has been done away with and it's now based on culture, which I really like. Um, and there's certain things that we have done already. We can advance through the ages. We have most of the tribal, tribal things reached. We're now currently uh, approaching the early medieval age quite quickly, but there's still a couple things that we have not yet discovered. Our cultural head is our liege as well. Uh, Basileo's uh, Macedon. And uh, what just happened? Our son is our new heir. What? Okay, I didn't click anything. I was just very confused. I thought maybe the game was running all that time. Okay, interesting. I wonder why that just came up right now. Hmm. Well, I guess that gives me... Um, I guess that's a, that's a good reason to maybe check out our succession line right now. Uh, we have a confederate participation... All children inherit equally, but apparently, yeah, we do have male preference. So, Agnatic, Agnatic, I guess Gavilkind, that's what uh, used to be, or what um, what the equivalent name would be in CK2. Um, so, yeah, we can obviously get away from that to Primogenitor, but we need higher crown authority, and we need the Primogenitor innovation in our culture thing. So, that's likely going to be taking some time, plus we do need some prestige as well that we don't have. In fact, we're actually losing uh, piety at the moment. Is that because... Why even? Because we're vengeful. Interesting. Interesting. Now, there's also something... Um, there's also dread, which we have. Uh, I like that. I don't even know where it shows, but we are... Oh, look at this. Look at our ba battle prowess. It's actually very high. And yet, stewardship is still our highest skill. Okay. Now, this is about our character. Let's quickly check our oldest daughter. She's 18 years old. She is chast, temperate, and a bit stubborn, but she has also gotten a steward education. Thrifty clerk is what she is. She's going to make a good wife, and potentially we will get a good alliance with her. Uh, then, obviously, our son and heir, Bosphorius, he's stuttering. That is not very good, especially because this trait is congenital, so it can potentially be uh, passed down. He's Still a charming person despite his stuttering. And he's very zealous. Interesting. So all the piety we lose here will probably make up later on. And then our youngest, Alexeia Orphanotrophus. Well, she's just two years old. There's not too much to say about her. But let's quickly check out our wife as well. Eupraxia of Nicosia. Wow, she's actually very good all things considered. And she, interestingly, is a very good fighter. She's ambitious. She's calm and generous. A charismatic negotiator, so she'll hopefully, um, you know, take over the role of a chancellor. Although, let's actually check out our council right here. She is just, you know, in the general assist ruler uh, task. We can obviously change that to have her manage our domain, give us more... Oh, focus on our soldiers. Okay, interesting. Focus on court politics. I think for now, assisting us is the best. She gives us overall skill of eight. That's, yeah, that's better than what we can get here. So we'll keep her on this task. We do have our Bishop Michael. He does not like us. Um, yeah, he does not endorse us. So this is a problem, something we need to deal with. For now, we'll just have him deal with religious relations, obviously. Our Chancellor is Mayor Samuel of the city of Limassol. Uh, that makes sense, right? He was, he was a pretty good guy. Yeah, he was pretty good, actually. Our Steward... 
and Heteria. I don't know what that is. Oh, that is, ah, uh, right. This is like the special knight or companion or whatever thing. Uh, this is a new class that has been introduced. These guys can actually actively fight, uh, which is very, very cool. And this is awesome because in CK2, I used to have custom uh, courtiers or custom characters for my Patreon supporters and sometimes even for just regular viewers as well. And now, well, I feel like this knight group is perfect for this. You know, it's about five to seven uh, people, depending on your realm size, I believe. Let's quickly check that here in the military tab. Yeah, five. Oh, we actually have nine. Interesting. Hmm. But yeah, so it's a certain, it doesn't really matter how many, but you have a certain amount of these knights that fight. And as I said, that is just perfect for a uh, custom character. So maybe we'll get some of those during or over the course of this series. We'll have to see. Uh, for now, I've started without that uh, because uh, there's not much customization going on right now. And uh, so, yeah, um, there's 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 only limited things I can do. But yeah, so this is a this has been the overview here. Let's actually continue with our marshal Demetrius. He's a godless empath. I like how, you know, this is a thing where they show you sort of the overall personality of that character. Uh, he's cynical, compassionate, but stubborn. And a cautious leader as well. Okay, so this is something we have in common. Let's quickly check out what we are. What, what does it say here? Well, we're heterosexual. Okay, that's good. But, um, I mean, not that, that it really matters. But, if, especially as a Greek. I, I don't think Greeks really care too much. But, yeah. Um, it doesn't give us an overview. Like, where does it say that? What they are? They're analytic lackey. Yeah, we don't have that. Okay. I guess because we're the player character. Awesome. And then we have a spy master, Stefania. Wow. Okay. She's a elusive shadow, arbitrary, gluttonous, but forgiving. Interesting. She's lowborn, but she's very talented. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's our council for now. Um, I've already talked about the greater political situation. We're currently at war with the Aglobids, but that's a war that we don't really care about all too much. I think our council's actually set up pretty well so far. Yeah, we're going to collect taxes. Uh, one thing I do want to uh, do, wanna do, though, is I want to find some secrets. Um, do I actually want to do that? Mm, why not? You know what? Let's find some secrets. Who's over here? Who's ruling this? Shaikh Damiana of Famagusta. Okay, so this guy is patient, an amateurish plotter, he's cynical and forgiving. And the Caliph Al-Mutaz ibn Al-Mutawakil of the Abbasids. He is greedy, lustful, he's arbitrary, cynical, and callous. This does not seem like a great man. Okay, now, as I said, though, we want to we wanna get uh, some advantage here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and send you to find secrets in Famagusta. Let's see what we can do because potentially we we can gain a hook on someone and we can maybe blackmail them. Who knows? In fact, we might even be able to just get the land this way, although I doubt that's actually going to be possible. Now, for now, we can also choose a lifestyle and there's five categories. And because of our martial education, we, you know, it would be smart to go for a martial focus. So we're going to do that. And now we can choose between the strategy, authority, and chivalry focus. Luck can win a duel. A fool can win a battle. It takes more to win a war. Uh, to rule is to make all the aspects of a realm move in unison and work together. Okay. Strategist, overseer, or gallant. Victory comes not through blood or gold, but honor. Okay, let me quickly check out our character again. We're content. We're brave. Challenges or danger, we fear nothing. Vengeful. I feel like this sounds like we're we're a knight type. You know, we're a proud um, and somewhat noble character. Mm, I think either strategist or chivalry. Prowess, attraction, opinion, advantage in battle, and martial experience, or just strategy. Uh, we already oh okay so we already have this gallant which I believe is the chivalry thing yeah so let's go with that and uh, selected so what do we have we have a stalwart leader reduces the risks of commanding armies okay courtship romance oh this is very good this is very good we might see some nudity here 
Uh, chivalric dominance, knight effectiveness is increased. Never back down, friendly fatal casualties are reduced. Okay, so this is very good for our knights. They're less likely to die. Promising prospects, marriage acceptance is increased, and king's guard. Oh, that's why we have more knights, right? Because usually you only have five. So we got extra four here. Nice. Okay, I like that. I like that so far. Good. Yeah, so that's been the setup, obviously, in the first part of the series. Yeah, it always takes a little bit longer. We haven't really unpaused yet, but I will promise you we're going to do that next time. For now, that is going to be it. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I guess this is like episode zero, but as I said, we're going to be starting off uh, next time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys then.